Samsung has been the most popular Android manufacturer for years. They've also held the top position when it comes to flagship Android smartphones for a very long time. However, the last two iterations haven't made a huge impact because of their incremental updates. The S4 was nice, but it wasn't a big step forward from the S3. The Galaxy S5 offered water resistance and internal upgrades, but it's still nothing explosive. Now with the Galaxy S6, Samsung has completely shifted gears. There was a time when you can't put the name Samsung and the term beautiful upgrade on the same sentence, but those days are now gone. This is the Galaxy S6, a reimagined Galaxy S smartphone. Samsung finally ditched plastic as its choice of material and joined the premium looking smartphone party. Whether it's a good or bad choice remains to be seen, but early feedback suggests that it is heavily favored by the majority. This is NoipyGeeks.com and welcome to our full review of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Let us talk about the design. The Galaxy S6 retains the familiar Samsung design language on front, but it's now using Corning Gorilla Glass 4 in front and back compared to the soft plastic material that was used on its predecessors. There's also no more fake metal on the sides as it has been replaced by a real aluminum with chamfered edges this time around. This gives the S6 Edge an elegant feel in the hand, something that can be said on the previous Galaxy devices. The power and volume controls are still on their usual places, with the headphone jack has been moved to the bottom. There's a small resemblance to the iPhone 6 speaker grills, but the similarities end there. In my eyes, the Galaxy S6 Edge looks more aesthetically pleasing than the iPhone 6, and it's not even close. Overall, the build quality has been vastly improved, and it puts it as one of the nicest looking phones right now. The Samsung Galaxy S6 sports a high-resolution 5.1-inch Super AMOLED Quad HD display with a resolution of 1440 x 2560 and has 577 pixels per inch, which clearly states that it is one of the most pixel-packed display out there. On paper, this thing is absolutely ridiculous, but I still have my Galaxy S5 with me and comparing the two shows how large of improvement has been done on the display. In true Samsung fashion, the S6 takes the crown as the best display from the Note 4. They've been known to push the smartphone displays to the limit and they've lived up to our expectations once again. The curved edges on the both sides of the phone definitely makes it a stunner, but it's also a source of minor annoyances. First, it is really uncomfortable to hold for an extended period of time because of the device's thin and sharp edges. It's also a bit slippery if you don't grasp it properly. Another thing to watch out for also is the fairly visible glares on the sides. Since this is an almost bezel-less device, the edge screen attracts a lot of glares. The edge screen has its uses and features though. People Edge brings a list of your 5 assigned contacts by swiping right from the edge screen. It is quite convenient but I don't think it's something that can be much faster than finding what you need the traditional way. These contacts are also color coded. We also got edge lighting. It's basically the same idea as the LED notification indicator but it makes use of the edge screen. If you got a notification from one of the contacts you assigned on the people edge, the edge will pop out a color corresponding to the color you assigned on that contact. But putting down your phone on its screen face down is not something a lot of users are comfortable with. Other features also include information stream and night clock. Information stream gives you quick glances to some important contents from your favorite news sources, social media updates, and it also displays your recent notifications without having to power on the device's whole display, which may conserve a partial of juice on the battery. I appreciate Samsung's creative ideas and effort in implementing these extra features, but in my opinion, the edge screen doesn't offer that much in terms of usability right now, but as an additional touch on design, it is really eye-catching. Previous iterations of the Galaxy S series used the company's very own in-house Exynos processor and Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors. 
But this time around, Samsung decided to stick with their own guns and just use an Exynos processor on all variants. The Samsung Galaxy S6 is powered by the latest Exynos 7420 octa-core processor with 3GB of DDR4 RAM and a Mali T760 MP8 GPU. This means that there's absolutely lots of power in store on this little beast and it will really take a lot before you can slow it down. It is one of the fastest smartphones out there today. Benchmark test and real life usage proves that too. Everything is fast and snappy and there's very little stutter throughout our time with it. Browsing the home screen, playing intensive games, multitasking, and almost everything you throw at it have been handled well by the device. Although TouchWiz is really inescapable on Samsung smartphones, but a lot of improvements has been done and we'll talk about that later in the software section. Of course, we can't have it all. The change in design prompted the exit of the removable battery feature that Samsung has been holding on to for years. To be honest, it's not big of a deal for the most part, especially if you're not a power user who always carries multiple batteries in your pocket or bag. The issue is that you cannot just go purchase a new battery and plug it in if you think it's crapping out or damaged already, something that is inevitable to almost any type of battery over time. You will need the assistance of Samsung or any technician and have them change the battery for you. The other omitted regular feature is the micro SD card slot expansion. I got to say that I'm personally disappointed on this one. Yes, the base model is now 32GB. Yes, there's a 128GB version, but it's just not the same. There's a huge difference on the price. The good news here is, 32GB is plenty enough for most of us because it can store a large number of applications, games, photos, and videos. The fingerprint scanner on the Galaxy S5 was okay, but it was poorly executed when compared to the iPhone. Fortunately, Samsung finally moved on from their old fingerprint scanner and made it better. The new sensor on the Galaxy S6 is far better and faster than the previous generation. It now works like with the iPhone where you only need to rest your finger on stationary in the scanner rather than doing a cumbersome swipe motion on the previous generation. The home button has been improved as well. It is now way more clickier and tactile rather than the mushy button on the Galaxy S5. The Galaxy S6 Edge runs on Android 5.0.2 Lollipop with Samsung's TouchWiz on top. The company's heavy skin has been long criticized for being bloated with unnecessary applications and other software implementations pre-installed out of the box. Samsung finally learned their lesson and started optimizing TouchWiz for the Galaxy S6. It has far less bloatwares and most of the added features were turned off. For those who actually find those features useful, it is still available in the settings menu. This version of TouchWiz feels light and blazingly fast. All of those annoying and almost to no avail software shenanigans are now nowhere to be found or just turned off primarily. The app switcher here is just blazingly fast, probably the snappiest multitasking experience on any smartphone today. Multi-window also makes an appearance, which can fully take advantage of the 3GB of RAM. The true essence of multitasking is doing two things concurrently. For those who really care about the aesthetics of the user interface, Samsung also added themes on this one. There are three themes that come pre-installed on the device, but if that's not enough, there's also a dedicated theme store that the company prepared for you. There's a lot to choose from in here, and what really did catch my attention is the Avengers Age of Ultron themes, particularly the one with Captain America, which I think matches our Black Sapphire Essex Edge that also flashes a shade of blue when being looked at most angles. The Samsung Galaxy S6 sports a pretty damn good camera module. The primary shooter boasts a 16MP sensor with a wide aperture of f1.8 and has an optical image stabilizer packed in. And just by looking at those impressive figures, it is without a doubt that the Galaxy S6 is a one hell of a shooter. With its wide aperture of f1.8, you can expect that the sensor can receive more light 
thus creating a stunning photo even at low light scenarios. The built-in optical image stabilizer can also help people with shaky hands take good handheld shots. Judging by all the photos I have taken, the device can snap photos with all the right colors and contrast, with the right saturation, thus creating a well-detailed and realistic photos without the exaggeration of post-processing. And with its amplified 16 megapixel sensor, images look pretty sharp and zooming in onto details is still pretty impressive. The device also takes photos with an aspect ratio of 16x9 natively. The sensor itself is a 16x9, which means there's no cropping that's being done. Almost all of the smartphone cameras today uses a sensor with a standard 4x3 aspect ratio, which can still be converted to 16x9, but requires some cropping. The camera interface is also pretty stellar. To start, you can open the camera app by double pressing the home button rapidly. Opening the camera app this way also showcases how snappy the processor is. The app opens lightning fast. The camera app's user interface have been toned down compared to the clunky and bloated previous one. This thing now also has manual mode which can fully utilize the device's superb camera module and giving it a photographer-friendly status. The manual mode gives you full access to the camera's ISO, white balance, focus, and many more. One of the perks of having the S6 Edge rather than the standard Galaxy S6 is the slightly larger battery capacity. We have a 2600 mAh battery that's powering this device, while the latter has a 2550 mAh. The battery performance may not be the best, but still matches the majority of smartphone devices that are on the market today. The device can last you for a whole day, with still some juice left. If you don't mind charging the device every night, it won't be a deal breaker. Screen on time lasted for almost 3 to 4 hours. Battery performance may be a bit disappointing to some, but they might find comfort on the device's improved charging implementations. The device comes with a fast charger out of the box, and basing from my actual test, the included charger really guarantees speedy charging. The device can step up 1% higher in every minute that it is plugged in. The device is also capable of being charged wirelessly. The beautiful wireless charger from Samsung is being sold separately for 2,099 pesos. But during the course of this review, I have tried a cheaper third-party wireless Qi charger and it did still work seamlessly. Hands down, the Samsung Galaxy S6 is one of, if probably not the best, smartphone today. The device may go head-to-head -head with a lot of recently announced flagship from the high-end market and also with the emergence of powerful yet budget-friendly devices from China and other local manufacturers. These competing devices has their own shares of pros and cons to complement the S6 which can help you make the purchase decision. But as per the Galaxy S6 Edge, the complete change of pace on the design perspective really resulted to an insanely gorgeous device. The glass and metal have always been a perfect match, although using this type of materials on a smartphone is known for its drawbacks. Samsung had to ditch the removable battery feature and the micro SD card slot expansion, which can be a real deal breaker for some. The display on this one is also probably the best screen I have seen on any device. Quad HD is in the spotlight in this point in time, and I am glad that it is. It is large, sharp, and just simply beautiful. The user interface have also been refined, which also efficiently utilize the device's powerful Exynos processor. The Galaxy S6 Edge is poised to aim power users, as wireless and fast charging are also possible on this one. The camera module is also surreal, something a photographer will take a look on, and the improved fingerprint scanner is a big plus. If you love the looks of the Galaxy S6 Edge, you can now get yours at a starting price of 41,990 pesos for the 32GB base model. But as for me, I think the regular Galaxy S6 is a smarter buy. With the pricing starts at only 35,990 pesos, also for the 32GB model, I just don't think that the extra auxiliaries are worth it enough for the extra cash. Plus, I have tried the standard S6 and found that it is more comfortable in the hands as it is symmetry and has the same outline to almost all of the devices that we are accustomed to. 
This has been Noy Pigik's full review of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button and share this video if you liked it. And also subscribe if you still haven't. Thank you for watching.